الذين آمنوا وتطمئن قلوبهم بذكر الله ألا بذكر الله تطمئن القلوب السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين My brothers and sisters, we need to think before we speak, if we would like contentment. You want to be happy, you need to say the best possible words. Whatever you want to say, think of the best way of saying it and then say it. That is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has asked us to do in the Quran. Imagine we're talking of contentment from revelation. Allah says before you speak, you must think of the best way of saying it, use the best words. Don't be hurtful, don't be abusive, and get to the point in the most respectful way. This is why in Surah Al-Isra, verse number 53, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقُلْ لِعِبَادِي يَقُولُ الَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنْ إِنَّ الشَّيْطَانَ يَنْزَغُ بَيْنَهُمْ And tell my worshippers, to say that, to utter that which is the best, the best possible words. For indeed, shaitan causes discord between you. You as the worshippers of Allah, as humankind, shaitan is waiting. Shaitan wants to seize any opportunity to split people, to cause friction, to cause problems. If you are careful of what you say and how you say it, you will definitely be able to be much more content than you are. You will be a happy person uh, earning the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and at the same time becoming a, an example for others. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a good understanding. Ameen. Surah Al-Kahf, we move on to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the cave and there is a very important lesson to be learned from the young who went into that cave. The reason why they went into the cave was in order to achieve contentment, to be protected from the adverse community, society, the rulers who were terrible, they were worried about their faith, so they went to a place where they felt they would be safe. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises them. Allah speaks about them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused miracles to happen in their regard because of their beautiful intention. Listen to the dua and the supplication they made. Verse number 10, Allah says, إِذْ أَوَى الْفِتْيَةُ إِلَى الْكَهْفِ فَقَالُوا رَبَّنَا آتِنَا مِنْ لَدُنْكَ رَحْمَةً وَهَيِّئْ لَنَا مِنْ أَمْرِنَا رَشَدًا Remember when they went to the cave, these youth, they called out to Allah saying, Oh our Lord, Rabbana uh, Hablana, uh, they said, Rabbana Atina min ladunka rahmatan, Oh Allah, grant us mercy from you, Wahayyilana min amrina rashadan, and make our affairs that which is goodness, uh, filled with goodness and righteousness, make our affairs good and righteous. Uh, so they are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give them happiness contentment and guidance. And this is why they say, Atina min ladunka rahmatan, grant us mercy from you. And as you know, mercy is filled with contentment and happiness. That's the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the point to learn here is if we would like contentment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, make sure you're in a good environment. Have good friends, have decent people around you, worship Allah in a beautiful way. May Allah make it easy for all those suffering, struggling across the globe to lead a beautiful, clean life. May Allah make it easy for every one of them and for every one of us. Amin. We move on to verses number 23 and 24. Very interesting. Whenever you are planning to do something tomorrow or a little bit later on or sometime in the future, remember it is all only possible if Allah wants it to happen. Therefore, you must say, Inshallah, if Allah wills. You want to do something tomorrow, say tomorrow morning we are planning to get here at 7 o'clock, Inshallah. You don't take Inshallah out of the equation, you will be depressed, you will be sad if things don't happen. But if you know that they're only going to happen if Allah wants it to happen, then you will not be depressed, you will not be sad. So remember, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructs you to say, whenever you want something to be happening the following day, add the term Inshallah to it at least. And this is why Allah says, 
ولا تقولن لشيء إني فاعل ذلك غدا إلا أن يشاء الله واذكر ربك إذا نسيت الله says do not say that you will be doing something in the future be it near or distant except by saying inshallah except by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and remember Allah whenever you have forgotten when you forget something remember Allah and Allah will definitely grant you uh, that memory back if he wills may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with a good memory and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us from his goodness I mean so remember the term inshallah is absolutely important not just to say it but to mean it when you say by the will of Allah it will happen if it doesn't happen you're not depressed you're not sad you've lost nothing because you know it's Allah this is why we say when you plan something and it happens your way you say alhamdulillah all praise is due to Allah when it does not happen your way I usually say, say Alhamdulillah twice, thank Allah even more, because now it's happening exactly the way He wanted it and He knows what is better for you. So may Allah make that easy for us. There is another term that we need to actually add to uh, uh, the praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you see something amazing, be it regarding yourself, something you own, something you're connected to, or regarding someone else, learn to relate it to Allah. You make dua for barakah and you relate it to Allah. Masha Allah, Tabarakallah, or La quwwata illa billah. There is nothing, no power and no might except that of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Masha Allah meaning whatever Allah has willed has happened. It is from Allah. It is the will of Allah. It is what Allah has willed. When you say inshallah, if Allah wills. And something happens, MashaAllah, it is that which Allah has willed. It is that which Allah wanted to happen. That's why don't ever become so impressed by something without relating it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the same way we spoke about inshaAllah a moment ago, here is another verse in the same surah, Surah Al-Kahf, verse number 39, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks of this. ولولا إذ دخلت جنتك قلت ما شاء الله لا قوة إلا بالله. And why had you not said, or had had you not said, why didn't you say, ما شاء الله لا قوة إلا بالله as you entered your garden. This is what Allah سبحانه وتعالى is saying. Had you entered your garden, you should have said, when you saw the beautiful garden, MashaAllah, la quwwata illa billah, we should also say, Tabarakallah. So to make dua for barakah or to relate it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is something very interesting. It, you will achieve contentment because what you have was given to you by Allah. Tomorrow he can take it away. You won't be upset. It was just leased to you. When someone leases something to you, you're expecting them to take it back at some point. If they don't, alhamdulillah, if they do, you don't become sad. MashaAllah, tabarakallah, la quwwata illa billah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us success. At the end of Surah Al-Kahf, there is a beautiful verse, verse number 110. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about what to do. You will achieve contentment. Are you looking forward to the meeting with Allah? Are you looking forward to the day that you will be granted Jannah? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَمَن كَانَ يَرْجُو لِقَاءَ رَبِّهِ فَلْيَعْمَلْ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا وَلَا يُشْرِكْ بِعِبَادَةِ رَبِّهِ أَحَدًا Whoever is looking forward to the meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should do good deeds, deeds that conform to the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. We're talking here of acts of worship and they should not associate partners with Allah. So if you want happiness and contentment in this world, success in the next, you need to make sure you do two things. Don't associate partners with Allah. And any act of worship, make sure that it was taught by the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. You will never go wrong. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us success. A quick point. People argue and debate about certain acts of worship. All the time, the arguments are there. It is an act of worship that is not compulsory. We don't argue about that which is compulsory. Many people argue about that which is 
not even compulsory according to those who are saying you should do it. So when there are acts of worship that people are saying this is not the path of the Prophet, peace be upon him, those who want to do it and those who are saying to do it, they acknowledge it's not compulsory. I'd rather do that which is compulsory that I know my beloved messenger, peace be upon him, has actually done. Why should I engage in that which is disputed and debated? I will lose my contentment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us contentment. Then we move on to Surah Maryam. I'd like to mention one verse from Surah Maryam regarding those who left their prayer and salah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in verse number 59, فَخَلَفَ مِن بَعْدِهِمْ خَلْفٌ أَضَاعُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَاتَّبَعُوا الشَّهَوَاتِ فَسَوْفَ يَلْقَوْنَ غَيَّا Allah says there came people thereafter who forsook their salah. They left their salah and they followed their own whims and fancies, their desires. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says they will definitely land up in a very bad place. They will be astray and they will end up in hellfire, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Obviously, this is a warning from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The idea is to be encouraged to say that we must fulfill our salah and don't just follow your desires, whims and fancies in transgression of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you control yourself and discipline yourself and do that which is beautiful, moral, filled with values, and if you do that which pleases Allah, then Allah will ensure that you are pleased one day. You pleased Allah, so Allah will make you pleased. And if you were to fulfill your prayer, you would definitely be from amongst those who achieved contentment and happiness. So my brothers and sisters, these are some verses that we look at. Remember, we spoke about MashaAllah, we spoke about InshaAllah, we spoke about the people of the cave and the fact that they were concerned about the environment. We spoke about not abandoning salah and not following desires where they are in transgression of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in this way, we will definitely be able to achieve contentment. Also bear in mind the words you say. Choose the best way to say that which you want to say. The best way of saying these words May Allah grant us success. أقول قولي هذا وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد. الذين آمنوا وتطمئن قلوبهم بذكر الله ألا بذكر الله تطمئن القلوب.